Hello and welcome to our family workshop. In this video, we are sharing and explaining scroll saw techniques that we would recommend for beginners. The first part of this process, we're demonstrating the pillar drill. And we're just pausing here and highlighting the drill bit itself. We use pinless blades, so we need a fine drill bit, but also you need the drill bit long enough to be able to drill through all the layers that you are working on. So that's the first technique that we are highlighting, is having a drill bit that is fine enough and long enough to do the pierce work drill holes that you'll need. The next technique that we are highlighting is to do once again with preparation, and that is to get the back of your project nice and flat. So we're pausing to highlight that we are sanding in the direction of the grain, and you'll notice on the edge, there's just a little area where it is darker. That's just the area of the belt where we haven't managed to use all the belts. What we're highlighting is we try as much as we can to use the full belt of the belt sander. Moving across then to the scroll saw itself, and in this first clip, what are we trying to highlight to you is the necessity to build up coordination between your hands. So as we pause, you can see that our front hand is acting as a clamp. It's holding the project down, whilst the back hand is guiding the project through the scroll saw. As we proceed, you might notice that this coordination changes. And as we pause once more, you can now see that this is reversed. It is the back hand that is acting as the clamp and the front hand that is acting as a guide. So that is something that you need to get used to doing when working with the scroll saw, is coordinating between the two hands. So one is acting as a clamp, holding it down and stopping the item from bouncing around on the scroll saw, and the other hand is guiding it through the machine itself. As we continue through the process of cutting out, you can see us coordinating those hands, making sure the item is clamped down onto the bed of the scroll saw firmly, but also guiding it through the machine itself. Now you can see we pause once more here, and that is to highlight the fact that we use a method of what we refer to as retreating back to the drill hole. So I like to have sharp lines and sharp finishing on the cuts that I do on the scroll saw. And in order to do this, I cut along the line and then retreat back to the drill hole that I have cut out. I can then follow another part of the line and join the two together to cut out some of the wood that we don't want. And as the process develops, we can develop the design, but we are constantly cutting along the line and then escaping away back to the gap that we've made in the woods, maintaining a sharp, precise and accurate finish. We've gone on to a different style of project now, one that we refer to as line arts. So once again, you're following the guideline and retreating back to the hole. But let's go through those methods once more. You've got that back hand acting as a clamp. You then have the front hand working the saw itself, guiding the item through the blades. And then again, we cut the lines out and retreated back to the drill hole. So that's the coordination, that's the technique that we use. Clamp with one hand, guide with the other, and retreat back to the drill hole that you've done. In this example, we have made the drill hole slightly larger in the one direction to get the shape on the bottom of the V. We then retreat back to the hole as highlighted. We also want to highlight the fact that both hands are once again coordinated. They're working together, and in this example, as we turn around the blades, we have both hands doing the two jobs of clamping down and guiding. In this clip, we are demonstrating cutting the outline. Again, we're looking for a nice, sharp, precise finish. So we cut all the way to the sharp point at the top of the item. 
We now pause and highlight the fact that we've turned the item around and we've used our scroll saw to cut in the opposite direction, allowing us a sharp and precise finish on the point at the top of our heart shape. We can then turn the item around once more and follow it around the outside to get a nice clean finish on the outside of our modified heart shape design. So that's the technique that we use for doing such projects. With our Robin design, you can see that we have stack cut this onto a larger piece of wood below. And we use stack cutting so we can produce more things at the same time or we can have contrasting colours. In this example though, it allows us a larger piece of wood. As highlighted, you have spare wood around the design, allowing us to grip the project more easily, keeping our hands away from the blade. Once we have cut that outline out, you can see we have a little bit of finishing work to do, but we are highlighting how close our hands are now to the blade. And whilst the scroll saw is a relatively safe piece of equipment to work with, it is preferable, especially if you are a beginner, for your confidence to have your hands a little bit further away from the cutting edge. Once again, with our masks, you can see they are small items. They will be turned into brooches and badges. And the larger piece of wood below the item being stacked allows us to keep those hands well away from the blade. It reduces the chances of us getting a small nick from the saw and leaves the process itself far easier to undertake and complete because you have a larger piece of wood to grip. This is something you might find if you try and tackle very small projects and very small pieces of wood. It can be challenging to control them when under the force of the scroll saw. So stopping a moment, just to go through that again, you have those hands well away from the cutting edge. Our front hand closest to the camera is guiding the item. Our back hand is then acting as a clamp. Both hands, though, are well away from the blade. We have the item under control, and it is easier for us to cut this item out using this method. You can also see highlighted the spare wood that we will need for us to grip the item easily, cutting it out successfully. A little side note worth taking into consideration is during these demonstrations, I am conscious of my hand position sometimes not to put it in front of the camera. So that can have a little bit of an effect on the coordination, but with time and experience, you get used to doing this. So there you go. Those are just highlighting a few techniques that we use that might be useful if you are new to scroll sawing. Let us know in the comment section if you've got any questions or if you want any advice or any ideas. Feel free to ask us. It's always a pleasure to try and help. If you're new here and you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you know when we upload another video. And as always, thank you again for watching.